ComC is your home for buying, selling, and flipping all the hottest trading cards. Their consignment marketplace is home to over 30 million cards, from baseball superstars like Aaron Judge to Marvel favorites like Spider-Man. ComC has something for every type of collector. Visit ComC.com today to build your collection with your favorite cards. You're listening to the Wax Pack Hero Sports Card Minute, a podcast where we discuss both the hobby and business sides of collecting. I'm your host, Mike Summer, and I want to help you buy, sell, and trade your way into a collection you'll love. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Wax Pack Hero Sports Card Minute. My collecting journey has me excited about two things this last week. First of all, I was finally able to snag a full complete set of 1988 Canadian Quaker Dips wrestling cards. These were attached to boxes of granola bars up in Canada back in the late 80s, and they're pretty tough to find. And this set was all still attached to the original boxes, and so they're in great condition. I was first turned on to these by Zan Morning. Oh, a couple years ago when we first had one of our initial conversations and he knew I loved oddball food issue type stuff and he told me about these and I found a couple lots of cards that had already been hand cut on eBay, but since then it's been almost radio silence on these these cards. There's been a couple lots and a couple singles that have come up over the last couple years that I ended up missing out on. But I picked up this complete set and I am pumped to have that. I I put some pictures and a video out about that and wrote a blog article about this set as well so if you want to learn a little bit more see these cards firsthand check out waxpackhero.com and you can see both that article and the video out there the other thing that's got me excited is my continued journey of putting together some of these vintage baseball sets from the 60s and so we had our small local show last weekend and I was able to pick up a nice lot of late 50s to mid 60s vintage cards to kind of continue to put together some starter sets for some of the sets that I haven't really dug deep on yet. And so everything from 59 to 66, I was able to pick up a couple hundred more cards to help me put together some starter sets for those as I continue to work through that over the next few years. So I'm excited about vintage. I'm excited about old oddball wrestling. I've got another package incoming from Canada that will probably be here by the time that you hear this. It's been a couple week journey getting here, but it's got some Stewart's wrestling and some 1885 Opeachy wrestling coming in to me. So I'm going to be excited to kind of continue that expansion of my old vintage wrestling, if you want to call vintage wrestling from the, the 80s. It's a little bit, a little bit more recent than, than what I'd call vintage for baseball, but any of that pre-1990 stuff is what I kind of consider vintage from a wrestling perspective. So that's what's got me excited this week in my collecting journey. Our main guest today, though, is Scott Wright from Next Gym, and he's going to be talking about their app that they've designed to help collectors make it easier for them to showcase their collections. And so we're going to be getting into to that conversation with Scott how we met, what their app is all about, what they're hoping to accomplish with it. And I think you're going to enjoy that. It was it was something that um, I enjoyed and I've started to dabble with a little bit since that conversation. And it's been it's been neat so far for for what I've experienced with it. So I, I hope you guys get a chance to enjoy that conversation and maybe get a chance to check out the next gym app. So that is our main topic today. And we'll get into that after I tell you about underdog collectibles, the online shop run by collectors for collectors that breaks several days a week across YouTube and Facebook. You can see what they're going to be breaking this week by checking them out at udogcollect.com, or you can visit them in their brick and mortar shop in Knoxville, Tennessee to see their full selection of wax singles supplies, even watch some of those breaks live in the shop. They're also an approved group submitter to SGC, so if you want to learn more about that program, you can visit them at udogcollect.com as well. And when you check them out, make sure you tell them that Wax Pack Hero sent you. Today, I want to welcome Scott Wright to the show. Scott is with Next Gem, and it's an up-and-coming technology company. At least in my words, it's a technology company. We'll see what Scott says that is intending to help facilitate and enable a user to, to share their collection, to image their collection a little bit more. That's my high-level understanding, but that's why we're going to bring Scott on to talk a little bit more about Next Gym. So, Scott, welcome to the show. 
Thank you so much for having me, Mike. We first got a chance to connect. Uh, it's been a, a little over a year now. I think the the 2021 Industry Summit in Las Vegas is where we first met face to face. Had some conversation there. You'd been working on Next Gym at the time. Things have progressed over the a year plus, and and it's it's time to come on and talk a little bit about what Next Gym is and what it means for collectors out there. So why don't you just give us an introduction to to Next Gym and and what is Next Gym? Yeah, so Next Gem came about because as collectors ourselves, we noticed some problems in the hobby and it, we struggled with them ourselves and we thought maybe there's a way we could address some of them. So I, I think you hit the nail on the head when you said the word tech because we're developing some really cool card specific tech just for the card industry. And, you know, one thing we noticed is a lot of the tools out there, whether they be marketplaces, social media, they weren't built for card people. They were just co-opted because there wasn't a better alternative. And uh, they have a, a lot of flaws because they aren't as nuanced like card collectors would like for all the different things we do. So uh, everything we do with NextGem is kind of just to bring together a disjointed market community and just kind of help save people time and money. So some examples. First, we help you take great images of your cards. Uh, we have a, our scanner on our app that does some really cool things. So obviously glare reflection is a, a common problem we have when taking pictures of cards, especially some of the newer shiny stuff. Uh, with our app, you can actually take the picture from a slight angle to eliminate that and it will automatically be adjusted. So you get a straight, uh, perfectly cropped photo and not only just to remove glare and reflection, but just to capture the true beauty of a card. There's some refractors where you want to get just the right angle to make it pop and look as beautiful as it really is, as you're seeing it. So we help you get those amazing pictures and then, like I said, we crop out all the background for you automatically, and we even extract data from the slab and put that in so you don't have to do that data input, which nobody likes. And we're actually starting to do it for rock cards as well uh, with a, a pretty high degree of accuracy that's constantly improving. So, so we help you image your cards, uh, and we kind of connect people. We kind of streamline that process. And then once you have, have them imaged, that's where the time savings really come in. So one thing we're doing is your collection, you have an exclusive link just to your username. So one thing I found when you're making deals with people, you say, okay, let's make a deal. What do you got? Or what are you interested in? And you start paging through your camera roll on your phone, trying to find all the various pictures with next gem. You just give them one link. They can go check it out, whether it's on the app, if they don't have the app, they can go to the website. It's fully searchable, sortable, filterable. They can easily see what you have. And you can as well. So we kind of eliminate that problem of the, the endless scrolling through the camera rolls that uh, is definitely a, a common issue in the hobby. Um, I talked about, we just implemented an eBay comp button. So one thing we routinely heard from people is pricing. How much is my card worth? But as you know, as any card person knows, that's a very loaded question and difficult problem to solve. And our approach has always been, the only thing worse than having no pricing is having inaccurate pricing. So what we've done initially is just institute a button under every card in the app. You can click on it and it opens up a page in the app with eBay recently sold prices. So whether that's for your own collection, you just want to say, oh, what's this one selling for now? One click, you can see that. Or maybe you're browsing the app. You're looking at everybody else's cards in our discovery feed, which is just infinite to your heart's content. You can keep scrolling down, seeing the cool cards that come onto the app. You see one you like, you can tap that button and find out what it's worth. And beyond that too, connecting with other collectors. So the chat within our app, every card, you click that chat button, you're, you're automatically connected instantly with the owner of that card. And maybe it's just, you know, showing them some love. Maybe you want to try to acquire it. So we're definitely trying to connect people in that way. And then the other thing we can do uh, with our search on NextGem is it's, it's, if you put in your Instagram name, your eBay username, it's universal search. So if you know somebody's username on Twitter, but you wonder, oh, what are they on Instagram? You can go search for that and you can find where they are across the platforms. And then we also sharing. So we have a unique share, build, share builder for cards where you right under the card, you click share and it pops up a custom builder. Whether you wanna do an Instagram post, an Instagram story, a tweet, you can pick the layout that works best for that card, whether it's vertical front, horizontal back, we have six different templates. So there'll be a template for every, uh, every manner of variation of card. You can zoom in on specific parts uh, and couple clicks you're sharing that card on instagram or twitter or wherever so so we're just trying to streamline all these processes and, and really save people time and money whether it's saving them time by just making it easier to 
to put cards up for sale, to share them on social media, to share them with their friends, to make deals, but then also save money by making deals off the traditional marketplaces. Um, obviously, a, there's a lot of action that goes on in those traditional marketplaces, but arguably just as much, if not more, goes on off them. So we want to help people give them some of the tools to do that more efficiently and, and take advantage of those opportunities. You talked about a custom link. Is is that for you and your whole collection, or is there custom links for every individual card in your collection or both? Both. Absolutely. So you have your one, we call it our link in bio. It's kind of that concept on social media where people say, click my link in bio. This is your link in bio for cards. And we're eventually good. We have a lot of ideas for ways to expand that and make it even more relevant. But initially you put that link in your social media bios, or maybe you just email and text it. And with that link, anybody can go and see all your cards, search them, sort them, filter them. And then you said individual cards as well. They all have that specific link as well. And something else we're doing is when you scan a card, a web page is automatically created for it. And we're optimizing all those web pages for search engines. So when somebody goes on Google and searches for your card, yours is going to be one of the first one that comes up. So we're kind of helping people take advantage of that search engine traffic that currently it's not happening unless you have it listed on a major marketplace. And at any given time, only about 5% of the cards in the world are listed on marketplaces. So we kind of want to be where the cards live before, until, and maybe even after they go to the market. You'd also talked about utilizing the technology of the app. Once you you take your picture, that the the app will kind of pull some of the metadata or some of the, the characteristics of the card off of the the graded, you know, slip or whatever you want to call it, you know, up at the at the top. Yep. You you mentioned something about raw cards too. Tell me a little bit about that. What What is the app doing with that? Is it actually identifying what a card is based on kind of a, a database or something? Or or were you just kind of picking card number? Or, or what do you what did you mean by what you're working on with the, the raw cards? Yeah, absolutely. So and just to wrap up what we're doing with slabs, we extract everything off there. The player name, the set, the variation, the card number, even the certificate grading number for the grader. We extract all that. We input it. And one cool thing we do is even on the newer PSA slabs, there's that QR code on the back that you can scan and it opens up the page to tell you the population. We automatically extract that link from the QR code and make it a clickable button in the card detail. So you can just click that and it'll open up and you can see what the population of your card is on PSA. Okay. So that's another one of the cool card specific uh, technologies that we've developed uh, for slabs. Also, we allow you to obfuscate automatically that serial number, that barcode on the slab, because a lot of people like to keep that information private, and we do that automatically for them. Uh, in terms of the raw card data extraction, a much higher degree of difficulty, right? Because it's not as obviously structured, laid out like it is on the slab label. Uh, but I actually had a meeting with our tech people this morning. We were doing some testing on it, and it's coming along. It's, I, you know, as a card person, I was initially skeptical because I know how nuanced the card world is and how many different... I mean, I always go back, I have this Randy Moss card that's shaped like a, a Christmas ornament. You know, it's just like, there's some, there's every different variation of cards. So I was kind of dubious, but it's having really good luck. And I kind of compare it to a certain degree to fingerprinting, where if you get a certain number of data inputs that you know are correct, you can match the card. And specifically with certain cards and variations, if you can get the serial number and the card number, that's half the battle. So we're, we're definitely still working on that. It's not fully implemented, but uh, it's improving all the time. And uh, before long here, we're going to we're gonna have a good solution for just extracting the data from raw cards without having to do that data input either. You've, you've touched on a lot of things through our conversation so far that definitely show that you've got this collector mindset in, in, in focus, right? And you've hit on some things that talk about facilitating some kind of peer-to-peer -peer business transactions too, or, or maybe that need to even integrate with some other marketplaces and things like that. So it would seem that you've got some background in the hobby. Let's talk a little bit about that. What is your background in the hobby and kind of how did you get connected to, to Next Gym? Yeah. So as a kid, um, I'm a, a child of the late eighties, early nineties. So I'm, I'm of that era. And I was that 10 year old in the you know late 80s early 90s that was setting up at the vfw with my cards and uh you know buying my chuck knoblock rookies for a quarter and selling them for a dollar uh to fund my hobby so that was totally me um every family trip whatever town we were in we had to find the card shop uh go buy some cards uh and then kind of like i think the common story i fell out of it is i went to college uh, in the late 90s 
really bad timing because there were some really cool cards coming out right when I was getting out of it. Uh, I wish I had stocked up on some fresh metal gems and rubies back then, but uh, I kind of fell out of it. Uh, and then I really got back into cards in 2017. Uh, I covered the NFL draft for 20 years. Um, I started a, one of the first NFL draft websites in high school, kept it going throughout college. I went to school for sports journalism and I was able to cover the NFL draft for 20 years. So I was, I was living the dream, writing, watching, talking about football for a living. And that's actually what got me back into cards. In 2017, there was the Senior Bowl All-Star Game down in Mobile, Alabama, and Panini America actually sponsored my coverage. And what they had me do was open packs and shoot videos talking about cards with some of the top offensive skill position players. So one of the very first players I shot one of those videos with was Josh Allen, who's who's doing pretty well for the Buffalo Bills these days. Um, I did them with, I mean, just Daniel Jones, Devo Samuel, Justin Herbert, just dozens and dozens of these big names over the years. And that's what kind of reignited, sparked my interest in cards again. So I got back into cards in 2017. And after a few years, uh, we were, as we call it in Minnesota, we were up north uh, at a guy's weekend. And there was a bunch of us collectors ourselves. And we started talking about some of the issues we were experiencing individually. And like, why wasn't there a better solution for this? And we kind of got to talking about how there had been a severe lack of technical innovation in the card hobby in the last 20 years or so. And that's changing now. I think we're seeing a lot of people come in and it's awesome, but I think it was the development was definitely stunted to a certain degree and the companies that you would have thought maybe would have been innovating had been. So we definitely saw some opportunity there. And like I said, just as collectors ourselves, we wanted these problems solved. So that was the genesis of next gem. And at that point we went about researching and just kind of validating the problem that there was a need in the market. And, uh, we officially started Next Gem in, I believe it was March of 2021. So uh, we've been in the App Store now. Uh, in July of 22, we went live wide in the App Store after our beta process. And uh, since then, we've got uh, thousands of members. We've got 50,000 cards. And one thing I'm really proud of, too, is the quality of cards on the app. Um, you know, we've got some really rare, cool, special stuff. And we're highlighting those in our annual awards. But perfect example, just this morning, I was checking the feed and a Penny Hardaway red PMG got scanned onto the app. I mean, it just stopped me in my tracks. So uh, we've got some really special cards, collections, and collectors on the app, and uh, only it's only growing. From what you can tell in the, the user base that you've got, does it seem so far that it's more shifted towards folks who are, I want to say, pure collectors that are just utilizing the app to kind of document their store or their collection digitally so that they're able to to share it or you know i guess is is there a kind of a use case that you've seen most frequent of how people are currently using the app yeah that, that's a great thing is different segments of the industry are finding different uses for it um and we've definitely got a lot of traction among personal collection people um for example we have i I think it's fair to say the world's preeminent Ricky Henderson collector on the app. He goes by Ricky 939 on social media. Uh, he's on there. Um, and, and one thing we hear from people too, is when you collect a certain player, it's hard to keep track of which ones you have, which ones you need. So we've heard from some of these personal, these player collectors that when they see a card, they just go and search on next gem to see if they have it already. So it kind of helps them check themselves. So they're not buying doubles and they have a better understanding of what they have and still need. So Definitely a, a strong use case for those those personal collections, uh, but also too even like card shops. Uh, we have a one card shop where they have the app on an iPad on their counter, and they have some of their really expensive cards that maybe they don't want in that display case, exposed to different elements. They'd rather keep them in the safe, but instead they're sitting up in beautiful 4K high definition photos that people can come in, interact with, see what else they have in the back. So um, we've definitely seen that use case for um, for the card shops. And then just flippers, a uh, little anecdote, kind of a perfect example of something we'd love to see on the app. About a week ago, somebody scanned in a Derek Jeter 1998 precious metal gem. I think it was like a PSA 7. It just freshly gotten graded. But the guy put in the card story that he had owned a card shop back in the late 90s. And somebody had pulled that card from his shop in the 90s. And it's just been kind of buried, right? It hasn't been on marketplaces. He listed that card on Next Gem. He scanned it and listed it. And... 24 hours later, after a bidding war, he had sold it for twice as much as he was asking for it initially. So it's a perfect example of how we help kind of surface that rare card that people have been looking for. And we made that side of the market happy, but we also made the buyer very happy by exposing it to people who are interested in it. 
You mentioned listing it. What, what did you mean by listed listed it on the site or on the app itself for sale? Is, yeah, is there a, an, an auction feature that's built into the app? Informally for now. So when you scan a card, there's three different things. You can list it as personal collection, open to offers, or for sale, and then you can put a value in if you just want to put a stake in the ground, what you're looking for. And then even we also have a featured card where if there's something that's just maybe it's a special card in your collection or something you want to highlight that you want to sell, you can make that your featured card and it'll be pinned at the top of your collection. So that's the first thing anybody who comes and will see. And right now deals, they don't have a formal structure. It would be similar to if you were making a deal on Twitter or Instagram, you would message the person in the app and, you know, consenting adults. But we're definitely looking for ways to maybe put some some guardrails in for people who prefer a more traditional transaction. Um, and like I said, we're not trying to be a marketplace per se, but we also understand buying and selling cards is, is it's a huge part of the hobby. Even for the truest of heart, you still want to buy and sell cards. So um, we definitely want to support that. And we're, we're making strides towards doing that. But uh, but yeah, right now, deals are happening on NextGem all the time, just through our chat. If somebody wants to learn more about it, they want to check it out, where can they go to to learn more, to see it, or even to to get that app? Is it on both the the Apple and uh, Google Play, and like where is it available for for folks to get? <laughs> we are Apple iOS only right now, but Android's coming soon. That's the uh, the other big request that we've gotten, and obviously there's a huge market out there, so we want to get them on the app as well. But if you have Android, you can still. Uh, get the NextGem experience by going to our web experience. And there's a link right on our website, nextgem.com. You can click and you can search and look at all the cards uh, on there. So you can still see the cards, even if you're Android. Uh, but I mentioned nextgem.com. We are in the app store. It's free to download. Everything on the app is 100% free. There's nothing to pay for. Uh, and then also too, on the website, we have some resources. We have some various blogs with some some test cases where we've we've kind of showed how others have used the app and the successes they've experienced from it. I talked about the sh social media sharing, uh, about how we make that easy, uh, not only to share the pictures, but we help share the hashtags. We automatically generate the most relevant hashtags for that card that you're sharing. And our numbers are showing that it's a 30% increase using our hashtags opposed to posting without those. So just by posting with NextGem, you're gonna get 30% more views on that card because we've tested and found the most relevant hashtags in the industry and for that specific card. That's very cool. Anything else that you want to make sure people are aware of about the app before we go today? I think I think we've hit on everything. Uh, we do a lots of cool car specific stuff, so I always forget uh, things it seems. But um, I think I hit on the main stuff. Uh, and and like I said, uh, I think the biggest thing to highlight is just you know everything on the app is one hundred percent free, and we just want to help people save time and money. Uh, that that's what we're about is just streamlining process for people so that they can focus on the fun stuff, the cards. Very cool. Well, thanks a lot, Scott, for coming on and kind of highlighting what Next Gym is up to. And hopefully some folks out there might uh, might see how they might benefit from giving it a try. And um, like you said, it's free, so it doesn't hurt to, to give it a try and see if it meets your needs. So um, I encourage everybody to go check it out. So thanks again, Scott. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. And we'll see everybody on Next Gym. Hi, this is Pat Hughes, Cubs announcer, coming to you from the sports card shop in beautiful New Buffalo, Michigan. The Gocher family has built an incredible place here for collectors to buy, sell, and trade cards and memorabilia. Be sure to stop by and let them show you around. TheSportsCardShop.com, connecting sports, athletes, the hobby, and collectors around the world. So there's a little bit about Next Gym. I love highlighting some of these new companies, new apps, things that are coming into the marketplace to try to make our collecting journeys easier. From what I've tried so far, I think my favorite piece of this app is how with these slabs or chrome type refractor cards, you can take that picture at a slight angle so that you don't get the camera reflection or the camera glare in the picture itself. And then there tool and their technology kind of auto corrects that so you're back to looking at a straight shot again but without that reflection it's really cool i would recommend that you check it out hey it's free it doesn't cost you anything if it works for you great if it doesn't there's other things out there that that maybe you'll like better but it's worth checking out if you ask me so scott thanks for coming on and talking a little bit about next gen well i'm looking forward to this upcoming christmas holiday Looking forward to spending some time with family and friends over the next week or so. I hope you enjoy your holiday out there as well. So wish you all a happy holidays. That's all I've got for you today, and I'll catch you next time.